Well, here we are, another week. It's a Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and of course, we're going to be starting out with one of our favorite topics this week is going to be some of the misconceptions and myths surrounding keywords and self-publishing. You having some tough times with getting the right keywords on your Kindle publishing book or your CreateSpace book? Well, you're not alone. We're going to hopefully help you flush out some good solutions. Stay tuned. Welcome to Self Publishing with Dale and Kelly. She fell asleep. And if you like to learn tips and strategies for publishing your own book, make sure that you subscribe and turn your notifications on to get all of my latest videos. Wow, it's crazy. I, I, I have my uh, live thing here. I'm talking on the chat and of course it starts to just go off here. So folks, it's not like we're on like an award-winning show here or anything. Gee whiz. Uh, but uh, anyway, we got to pay the bills before we get things off and going today. And we want to start it out with today's broadcast is sponsored by our good friends over at bookdoggy.com. Hey, Bookdoggy has quickly become the most effective new ebook promotion site in the industry. Check out their new free video feature. Head over to bookdoggy.com slash four dash authors. Once again, that is bookdoggy.com for excuse me, slash four dash authors for more details. If you've used Bookdoggy before, please drop a little comment in there. Let us know if you've used Bookdoggy before. And remember, if you uh, go over there, name drop name drop. Say, hey, Dale and Kelly sent me on over here. And any event. Uh, also, this week is brought to you also by the massive giveaway for self-publishers. Have you entered this yet, Kelly? No, I, I'm a family. Oh, so darn it all. But if you were a family, would you? Of course. Of course. Who doesn't like free? I love free stuff. See, we've brought together some of the it's a veritable who's who in the self-publishing industry to provide you the most value-packed giveaway for your publication business. Lulu Press, Book Doggy, Archangel Inc., Lapid Marketing, Indie Unlimited, and the upcoming release of the DIY Publishing Course have partnered together to deliver all the self-publishing tools you've come to know, love, and expect from this channel. The contest runs till Thursday, March 8th. That's right. It's still going right now. We're not even a week in. The 12 lucky winners will be announced live on this channel. No purchase is necessary. You can enter daily through dozens of different social shares across multiple social media platforms. To enter for your chance at winning one of 12 prizes, head over to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash giveaway. Once again, that is selfpublishingwithdale.com slash giveaway. She, she, she whispered it. I, I'm not sure if anybody caught that one there. A little Miss Mousy here. Hey, next week, that is going to be on Thursday, February the 22nd at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to see about setting you up with nine steps to success in self-publishing this year, 2018. We're going to give you some up-to-date, relevant information. Whether you are a newbie or you're an experienced veteran in this business, we're going to give you a couple nuggets of information that's going to get you off to a great start and continuing on throughout the rest of this year. Well, we got the bills paid for, so now we're ready to start cracking here today. How you feeling? What's the chat? What's the chat up to? Who's here? All my friends are hanging out today. All your friend, all my friends. <laughs> there are so many people in this chat, so if I miss you, my sincere apologies. I've I've shouted you out via, you know, words. So words. if I don't shout about verbal, sorry. Alvaro, hi. Good to see you, Alvaro. Eddie, thank you for joining us for the first time. Um, we appreciate it. Uh, Mark Brownless from UK. Right? My boy, Mark, yes. He's, he's staying up a little later for our broadcast. Thank you for sacrificing sleep for us. Uh, Ava, thank you. What up, super assistant Ava? Monique, hi. Da it got silent after you. I said Monique. Oh man, Monique, <laughs> what's the deal here? Uh, dog, Dad, say it. Raw dog. Raw dog. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see raw dog in the house. Denise we got a couple admins and here. Keith and Anthony, hello. And once again, if I miss someone, because it's. Lots of people are here. I'm sorry. It's great to see you popping. If you're watching this on the replay, 
Remember, we're gonna be here every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There is one day in March. We're gonna take the day off, sorry. We have a little bit of plans already, but we'll let you know about that ahead of time. That's going into March, so. You know, things are real exciting in the Roberts household, and man. I forgot something. What did, what did uh, you forget? Alvaro said he had great results with Book Dog, and he posted a video. Excellent. Yes, it's good to hear. Um, Alvaro had some great results with Book Doggy. Uh, you know, Book Doggy might be the new dog in the fight, man, but I'll tell you what, they, they are bringing quite a good game. And the funny thing is, I tell you, I'm, I'm talking to more people, and it seems like we're getting even more testimonies through Book Doggy. And uh, for those of you that aren't aware, hopefully he won't mind me saying this, but Martin Crosby is the mastermind behind Book Doggy. And if you haven't caught the interview with Martin Crosby yet, you may want to go back over into YouTube and look up Martin Crosby interview with Dale Roberts and you will, you will really enjoy it. Days off are for losers. Ava, oh. you're fired. A, that, that's a okay. So that I, means I'm, you're not allowed to take any days off. Um, I'm not paying your bill. Sorry. Which, by the way, um, I want to kind of let people know, too, um, Ava is here inside the chat. Excellent, excellent assistant, virtual assistant. She's uh, definitely always in uh, eager for work. Um, and right now, she's working on two giant projects for me. And Ava, if you want to give them a hint, go ahead and drop it on in there. I have no qualms in sharing exactly what we're going to be doing. So there are two big things that are going to be coming to my website. And the website, by the way, voted top 100 self-publishing blogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, they, well, what was that? You scratched my head. Like, yeah, no that wonder Mark pen. thinks this is comedy here. <laughs> get, get a pen here. Use this pen instead, you know. Uh, I realize that's not the pen you're looking for, but in any event. So, hey, let's get this uh, thing a crack in here because we're going to be talking about the uh, six self-publishing myths about keywords. What's the big hang up with keywords anyways? I don't know. And there's such a different opinion on it too because even right. you and I don't agree on stuff. We're not gonna agree on, on a lot of things, but I'll tell you this much that there is definitely a lot of crazy rumors running amok here. And we wanna kind of hopefully clarify some of these things for you and get it to where you're kind of thinking about how you're approaching keyword business. And if there's one thing before we finish up and we get into those six points, what do you think is the most common issue outside of the six things we talk about here that aren't misconceptions? What is the biggest issue that you've found when it comes to keywords? I think people overcomplicate it. Yeah, it's not Rubik's Cube here, folks. And, and I'm not trying to play down or talk down to you or treat you you know, less smart or anything else like that. It, it literally, when it comes to keywords, you should not overthink it and you shouldn't overemphasize it. She's enjoying the chat here, folks, which that's better she's laughing than yawning. Um, which by the way, she uh, she owes you guys a uh, Coke if she yawns at all during this, uh, this, this broadcast, yeah. So, come on, she can afford it, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get it started. We're gonna start with point number, did I say I get even numbers? You get odd numbers? I get, get even, even numbers. numbers. Yeah, all right, here we go. Six self-publishing myths about keywords. I forgot to put that up. Whoops. Here we go. Number six. One or two words. Now the point of keywords, now this might sound stupid for me to say, is for people to find your stuff. If you just put one word, are people probably going to find it? Probably not. I bet you never put just fitness for a keyword, did you? I did early on. I, I literally, I used to think keyword meant one word. Um, and and yeah, you can use one word for a keyword, but that's that's almost like, you know, like here, would you like to take $100? Would you like four quarters? I mean, four quarters, you get four, like, hey, there we go, you got four, yeah. Well, now you're more educated, and if you would have had this channel back then, you would have known. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, for greater chance of you being found and getting money, and who doesn't like money? I like money. Be get more than just one or two words in those slots. Yeah. I yeah. don't know what else to say about that. Do you well, have any other thoughts? Long tail keywords, you hear this thrown around quite a bit. What does long tail keyword mean to you? Long tail meaning, 
I know in the product it means it might take a little bit longer for it to sell, but I don't know in the book, no, no, no. Okay. In the book world. Lo long tail, long tail keywords essentially. This you gotta go back to your FBA days. Come on. You get we gotta we gotta take Kelly back to her, her FBA. I am days. going in the FBA so, days. Long tail keywords means that it's a string, a string of words uh, that you're putting together. So um, in any event, she's giving me that look. Like she's like, no, it's not it. All right, so six. You know, we got the keywords, one or two keywords. So make sure that you're really dialing that in and get it uh, to where you're doing more than just one or two keywords if you're ever utilizing it. There's nothing wrong with using a single keyword within a book description, correct? No. Okay. As long as it fits and doesn't look all hunky junky. Right, exactly. Hunky junky. Number five, keyword guessing. Now, there's a little bit of a disagreement here within the Roberts household. Okay, um, here's the thing. When you're you're putting together your book, you want to have a good idea of who your reading audience is. So that way you can determine what's their problem and figure out how you have their solution. Yeah, you can guess your way through keywords, uh, but ultimately you wanna do that research to figure out what it is that they are searching for and how they're searching for it. There's specific combinations of words that's gonna get them over to your product, and if you just try guessing, it's just not gonna cut the mustard. Now, you can see here, Miss Roberts here has this, this crazy look on her face. All right, you have the floor. I guess. I guess. I, guess. I don't guess. I make, well, I make educated guesses as to what my audience who wants my product would put in the keyword bar. So I guess it's not just guessing out of thin air. It's making educated guesses. Educated guesses. So you wouldn't recommend that a newbie uh, guess their way through things. Nope. They could if they know their audience. They know their audience. Okay. Yeah. Now, like keeping if, in mind, this isn't a myth necessarily. It's more of a misconception here, folks. Like if someone is very passionate about, you know, historical romance and is very much in that space, I don't think they're going to need to do any research because mm. they know what they're searching for. That's, that is true. So. That is true. It, it is less difficult for me when I research workout or exercise or fitness things because I kind of know what I'm looking for. Um, so in any event, keyword guessing. Don't guess your keywords here, folks, if you have no background in it. Um, number four. Auto-suggest. Wait, I've suggested auto-suggest. What does this mean? Auto suggest is good, but make sure you're always doing it in incognito, aka private mode on your browser. Because if you don't do that, it's going to be skewed with stuff that you might be looking for. It's true. Amazon specifically tailors every customer's experience to their needs based on previous purchases, search history, and all those things in between, like a similar audience that have purchased those same things and search for those same things, they're gonna suggest those things. Uh, so if you go into just a regular browser, it's going to auto-suggest things based on your needs. So uh, understanding that auto-suggest is great only if you're utilize, utilizing this through incognito. And actually, I'm gonna give a big shout out and some credit over to Dave Chesson of Kindlepreneur because uh, Dave was probably one of the very first ones I heard uh, two or three years ago. He was on the great podcast, Authority Self Publishing, with uh, Steve Scott and Barry Davenport, and Dave had shared the incognito approach, and it just blew my mind. Yeah, it was a great approach, so auto-suggest. There we go. Number three, first page placement. All right, this is the, this right here is the coveted spot. In speaking of Dave Chess, and we talked about first page placement in a recent interview with him here on my channel. And the thing is, keywords alone are not going to get you first page placement. There are many things that will get you first page placement, but to keep you there, keywords alone are going to do it. You're going to need purchases, you're going to need people landing on there, you need good sales conversion, um, you need to get it to where you're within the right categories you've got all the keywords locked together so first page placement is so much more complex and if i were to recommend anything search up first page placement dale on youtube and you actually will see a full explanation about first page placement and how you're able to get there now i know kelly's got an experience that got her on first page placement 
Well, you explained it different now than what we did before. Oh, so. it made more sense when I told you. <laughs> okay. But I don't do, I don't add categories because I think it's a waste of time. I, during Q4, just based on keyword, I had about half of the first page that was mine. So uh, I think a combination of good keywords that people are searching for and sales. Yeah. So So keywords alone aren't going to get it. So if you're not drawing a dime and you've been on the market for a while, uh, rest assured, it doesn't matter what keywords you throw on there unless it's so freaking obscure, um, like the most obscure keyword, long tail, like seven words in a row, like the home workout plan for seniors over the age of 75 at home. I mean, yeah, of course you're going to get first page placement because no one's looking for it. So just remember this, that keywords alone are going to put you on that first page placement, get you that coveted first place spot. So here we go. Number two. Keyword stuffing and metadata. Mm. Now, irrelevant keyword stuffing and metadata. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, don't put everything in the kitchen sink in your keyword slots if it doesn't have anything to do with it because it's going to confuse the customer. You might have great intentions, but you ain't going to get any sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just trying to shoehorn in a bunch of nonsensical keywords. Um, that's all well and good. And I know that there's some courses out there that encourage keyword stuffing that like literally like stuff all these tags in here and it'll get you better search results. Yeah. Well, that's going to confuse the customer. And here's the other one that um, uh, one of the common misconceptions I see sometimes is within the seven keyword slots inside your dashboard or the five keyword slots is putting in, let's say we've got workout plan as one of my keywords. And then I just throw in dieting for beginners all into one slot. Well, those make no sense. They have no reason to be forced into one slot. They don't link together. Now, I'm just throwing these randomly out here, folks. Someone's going, yeah, well, I looked it up over on Autosuggest and Incognito and it actually says it is. So look, it's not a proven methodology for keyword stuffing. And for those people that are successful in doing it, there's probably more than just keyword stuffing that's bringing them to the table. So, you know, for instance, these people that are keyword stuffing could be out, you know, doing some review swapping. They could be, you know, getting bots to, to click on their, their pages. There's so many things that can be able to do that. So folks, keyword stuffing. And I know this isn't Kindle, but with merch, they're starting to crack down on keyword stuffing. That's true. And someone from corporate actually said that the algorithm on the merch side Amazon merch, the t-shirts, actually prefers simple, uh, like simple keywords. You mm -hmm. can use like up to 250 characters, but the algorithm likes, you know, just a few words. Simplicity. Mm -hmm. So not going completely nuts. Now, I'm going to say this, that right now, I'm, gonna put, I'm putting my hand up. I should put, put this one up. Uh, I've done this previously on merch as well, where I did keyword stuff and they blocked that shirt. They literally like, they're like, no. And I, I like, look at that. I was like, what's wrong with it? And I, I put a bunch of keyword stuffing in. And you know, you know, you would think I would know better from the publishing end of things that I wouldn't have done it over on the merch shirts. But either way, they came over and smacked my hand. But this has been some time ago. We've actually had these merch accounts for what, a couple of years now? It started in November of 2015. Yeah, it's it's been quite a while. So, um, but yeah, when they blocked it, I was like, no, oh, why did you do that? Well, it's not nice. And don't you think if you keyword stuff too much, it could mislead the customer and then lead to poor reviews? Yeah, absolutely. I can imagine so. I can imagine so. Well, uh, we're starting to really pop things off here. This is great. We're starting to rock and roll. Make sure that you guys are sticking around for the question and answer portion here of today's broadcast because we're just going really, really, really fast. Uh, so I want to know... What are your thoughts on the whole keywords? What are other misconceptions about keywords? Drop your thoughts in the comments, whether you're here live in the stream or you're watching on the replay. And of course, if you are either of those folks, before you do comment, hit that thumbs up. Where's that thumb at? Thumbs up, yeah. Be awesome, and of course, um, you know, we definitely always love to hear from you folks. And sometimes I get emails from, from people. Please, you, you're more than welcome to drop me uh, an email at Dale, selfpublishingwithdale.com. But also there's a discussions tab here on my YouTube channel. That's at youtube.com slash 
sell publishing with Dale L. Roberts. And if you just drop something to discussion, that will really help out. Um, it's great getting your questions over through email, but sometimes, like right now, I, I mean, Kelly sees it. I get a lot of emails per day. And the problem is, is if I keep getting the same question over and over, it makes more sense if I just answer it in one big public place. Or you can just show up to these live streams. How about that? Uh, but at any rate, um, please don't let that discourage you from reaching out to me by email. I love hearing from you folks any day. Um, but here we go. Uh, so let's go ahead. We got to start to oh lean on over here to nine steps to success in publishing. We're going to be doing that this next Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. So you want to make sure that you join us for that at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Kelly, are you going to be there or are you just in the picture? They'll have to find out. They're going to have to find <laughs> out for sure. And, uh, of course, the uh, our proud sponsors here of the stream is bookdoggy.com. Remember, if you are looking for a way to promote your free, almost free, or new release ebook, make sure you get a hold of bookdoggy.com. You're going to check out their free their new free video feature, head over to bookdoggy.com slash four dash authors. And last but not least, if you haven't entered the contest yet, why haven't you entered the contest? The massive giveaway for self-publishers. You just head on over to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash giveaway and enter that today and all the way up to March 8th where we're gonna have a live drawing. That's right, we're gonna pull the winners live. And a couple of these proud you know, uh, service providers are going to show up and they're actually going to help me pull the names. There you go. That's going to be exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So we got 12 winners on March the 8th. Really, March the 8th is going to be kind of almost a open panel. We're going to be talking question and answer. So we're going to actually have a couple of guests. You can have an opportunity to talk to some of these experts in their fields. So awesome. You'll be able to talk to us. Longer. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be seeing some upgrades here hopefully soon. We were going to do it this week, but unfortunately, I'm really tied up on finishing up some big projects that are in the works. So stick around on this channel. You're going to see this. there's going to be some cool upgrades, some neat little nifty things. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get some live guests here pretty soon. So that's going to be I'm a lot of fun. I'm not good enough. Well, of course you are. But... <laughs> They say we're humorous, so I have to still be... They say we're humorous? <laughs> Where do they say it's humorous? B ban that person. <laughs> uh, Mark Brown says this is comedy. Ava says it's gold, isn't it, Mark? Like if it was TV, I'd totally watch it. In fact, I got it from the TV also for losers to come watch. <laughs> wow. Tremendous. All right, here we go. So our last misconception about keywords... Number one is software is a necessity. Oh, I you know I think we both can kind of speak on this, but let me take let you take it away. There's been a couple times that you give me access to software and I've never used it. Yeah, I just like doing Amazon because it's there, it's easier. Mm -hmm. I already know how to use it, and it gives you the exact information that people are searching for. Yeah. I'm sure the other ones do a fine job, but I have to do another login and it just wastes too much time in my mind. Yeah, software is not a necessity. And for those of you that are cash strapped out there and don't have the means to get software, can it make your life easier? I'm sure, yes. But here's the thing is, much like any skill, if you continue to practice it and you work on it, you will eventually get better at it. Um, you know, so for instance, for me, for keyword research, I literally just go over to incognito and fire it off real quick. Now I've used quite a few great, great programs for keyword research and niche research and things like that. Nothing against them, but it's not a necessity. And as much as some of them would like you to believe that they are, they, they aren't, they aren't. You really can just kind of do this on your own. And uh, what are some other ways that you've done keyword research without having to get a software? Um, I'll, it's more niche research, but I use it for keywords sometimes too. Mm -hmm. I'll go to other listings and see, mm -hmm. um, if a, you know, item is ranking really well, I'll see what keywords they're using. I won't copy, don't do that, but I will use similar keywords. I have went to Google Trends. I have went to Etsy. Mm -hmm. Um, and haven't you even hired out before? That didn't go so well. That didn't go well. Okay. No. never mind. <laughs> I 
exposed my stank face. <laughs> well, it looks like we're finishing up a little bit earlier than usual. Of course, you guys don't want to go away. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up. Uh, we definitely, wow, what happened to my subscribe button? It turned into an orange blob. That says subscribe. That says right subscribe. There. Yep. So if you're not subscribed, which by the way, 62% of the people who watch the videos aren't subscribed. Seriously, if you're watching right now, hit that subscribe. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> sorry, oh. that was a little loud. Yeah, <laughs> our boy, <laughs> our, our Saskatchewan, a Saskatchewanian, is that what they, what you would call him? I kept mess mean to message you. I just got my laptop back today. I wanted to see how everything was going. So shoot me a message. Yeah, it's great. Great to kind of see things. Uh, do we have any kind of questions in the chat? Uh, remember folks, if you want to help support this channel, of course, see some more upgrades in here. Hit that super chat. To be definitely really, really awesome. You know, every last dollar counts. It's not like AdWords is going to end up paying my bills anytime soon. Just a comment. Ava says Amazon always eventually cracks down on crap tactics. She's seen publishers yep. go from the top of the world to oblivion, like they can't even show their face online anymore. Yep. Mm. It's you got to be really careful. And there's some people that are skating that that razor thin line. You know, uh, you watch out. You you might be getting away with it right now. But here's the thing: it's like unprotected sex. You go out and have enough sex with enough partners out there, you're gonna expose yourself to a sexually transmitted disease eventually. Okay, maybe not as severe as that, but you could literally you lose your money, your income if you're sitting here playing around with things that you shouldn't be doing. Uh, Denise just commented she also thought keywords were one word and preferably words from the book description. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony says if you have an audience and following keywords are irrelevant. That's um, correct. Yeah. You know, you could literally have poop keywords. If you've got a following and you put something out and you send out an email, uh, an email blast to that following, that'll put you right up there and start ranking right away. And um, yeah. Yeah, good one, good one, Anthony. What do you, you get think, a banana sticker? What do you think about this that Herbert said? Misconception: yeah. We never gonna win the keywords game because we're a small fish in a big pond. Sharks in a saturated ocean will devour us. Um. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose. I mean, uh, I, I guess I'm a, ha a guy that looks at the glass half full. Um, you know, just keep trying to, to push forward, Herbert. You know, it's 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 not as bleak as you would think it is. Uh, if we're if if it was me versus say Stephen King or James Patterson, I, it's like fighting a toddler. They'll probably punch me in the face and my my skull would collapse. You know, at this point, um, yeah, I agree with you in that regards. Um, and and then you know something else that we haven't even stated too is keywords are ever evolving. It oh, depends yeah. a lot on trends. You know, uh, so that's going to be it's it's literally you're spinning plates with keywords. Um, yeah, and I don't know what niche you're in, but um, if you're in too broad of a niche, try to get it smaller, and that might help you out too. Yeah, niche it down. Um, Denise wants to know if winners on the 8th need to be present. No, winners don't need to be present. It'll be nice, um, but you'll be notified. So there's a reason why on the giveaway, if you're kind of put off like, oh, I gotta log into this Gleam type thing, um, it's because we need you to log in so we can contact you when you win. Uh, so uh, I ha I'm not seeing as many entries as I, I was kind of expecting. Um, but, you know, if for some reason you're holding off on entering the giveaway because you're like, oh, I don't want to log in, it's you got to log in so we can reach you and contact you when you win. So, um, you know, rest assured, I'm not going to be spending my time spamming you or anything else like that. Um, this is going to be about winning a giveaway. Denise is overwhelmed. I know this has nothing to do with keywords, but we have a couple minutes. Cool. Um, all she wants to do is write, but with all the marketing and learning, I haven't written anything since the end of last year. Why do you have to say that? Yeah, it can be really, really tough. Uh, what you have to do is start to, Denise, focus on the priorities. What is most important to you? What's most fulfilling to you? You do have to go out and market and promote some point or another, or you have to hire out. Um, in fact, actually, this brings up a great point. Lapit Marketing, who is part of our giveaway, um, they specialize in that. Like literally, they just want you to do what you do best and they help you set up on those type of things. Now, Stephanie, if you happen to be watching this later on or you're, you're listening in, uh, feel free to tell a little bit more about Lapit Marketing. But nonetheless, uh, Lapit Marketing really helps with author platform building. Now, there's even uh, bigger 
uh, opportunities and uh, people like Johnny Andrews from Author Platform Rocket who help out with that. So if you want to focus on writing, then there is that avenue. Now, I'm not going to reveal too much, but I've been talking with Ava about something and we're just going to kind of leave it at that. Ava knows what I'm talking about and hopefully that will kind of cover a little bit more of a solution on your end of things. So, Yeah, and just do what you like. I, I've been there. I hate marketing. So I just do what I like and the rest will fall into place as it should. Um, lots of people are just commenting. So Hi they, from Italy. Yeah. Jacuti Pie stopped in. Um, Create Space is a little bit down this month, but overall it's it's treating me quite well. Yeah. Um, that's about it. It's, Awesome. You no know, questions, just comments. Well, very good. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you hit that little thumbs up. And uh, if you really enjoyed it, make sure that you share it with somebody else who's into publishing their own books too. In the meantime and in between time, this has been Self Publishing with Dale. And Kelly. We'll see you next Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.